We'll get started with uh, Bob Holt, please. Hey, Eric. I guess uh, JD had some kind of stomach virus or flu bug or something. Could you tell us what he had, and then just what you think of the way he played, considering he was he was ill? He played phenomenal. Um, you know, he, he he threw up at one point, and then he, uh, you know, did it again at halftime. Uh, didn't know if he was going to come out and play the second half. Um, I think it's I don't. I think it's some food, to be honest with you, because I haven't felt great all day. So, I, you know, that's, that's what I'm assuming it is. Um, I thought he was awesome uh, offensively in the first half with the 16 points. We needed his points. Obviously, we turned the ball over way too much. Um, our bench, really, really good with 34 points. Uh, but I, I thought J.D., you know, in pick and roll was, was, was really, really good for us. Um, you know, and I, the difference in the game, really, both teams turned the ball over, but we won by six. And we, you know, we outscored them by six points off the turnovers. And then, you know, it's a really good rebounding team. I thought we did an excellent job rebounding with our small lineup. Obviously, we went with Justin Smith a lot at the five spot. I thought Ethan played his minutes really well. Um, so, it's a, you know, it's a good win. Now, now it's, we've got to get ready for this next game. And of all the shots J.D. hit, the one late, the, the shot clock's run down, he kind of loses the ball, picks it up, throws it up off the glass and goes. And what would you think of that shot? How big was that in that situation? I mean, it was huge. We needed a basket. We were milking the clock a little bit from the two-and-a-half-minute mark on. Um, huge, huge basket for us, without a question. Um, but he, that's what he is, you know. Like, he's a guy that makes these shots that you sit there and say, no, 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 no. Oh, good shot. Um, it happens all the time, and you kind of got to live with, with giving him a lot of freedom uh, to take those shots. Okay, th thanks, Eric. Thanks, Bob. Curtis? Hey, Coach, you, you guys held Tillman tonight to nine points, fouled him out, and if, if StatCast is correct, zero rebounds. Can you just talk about the defensive performance on Tillman tonight? Yeah, I mean, that's all we talked about, um, you know, since, you know, the, the, when they won the game against Georgia, we, we, we got together as a staff, we got together as a, as a team last night. Um, you know, we wanted to sandwich him, we wanted to dig on him in the post. Um, we wanted to double block him out. Um, we knew that we were probably going to have to go small during stretches. Uh, and I thought our small lineup was phenomenal. I thought they made catches more difficult in the post. And then, obviously, we tried to put him in as many pick and roll situations as we possibly could um, to, to, you know, to try to try to get downhill a little bit. So, um, really proud of us double blocking out, and not just relying on one person to to try to block him out because uh, he's such a great player. And 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 we did a great job of just limiting, you know, his touches as well. Coach, do you recall ever having a game on, on both sides with that many offensive fouls? And how difficult did it become to find a rhythm offensively? Yeah, it was, you know, the play calls, at least from our end, you know, it was, it was, it was hard. You know, they're such a good defensive team. Um, you know, I thought they played with really good desperation. Um, you know, I mean, you're talking about a team that was ranked, you know, high earlier in the year. And Coach Martin does a great job. It was a physical game. I mean, it, I don't know what it looked like on, on TV, but, but live, it was a physical game. And I thought defensively, you're talking about two really uh, fundamentally sound defensive teams. And I thought the guys guarding the ball did a great job. And then I thought from a ball handling standpoint, you know, for, for us, I thought we had some guys tr try to get a little bit, uh, you know, lower their head and lower their shoulder a little bit too early on some of those charges that were taken by Missouri. Teresa Walker, please. How, at this point, Coach, the challenge, you've won 12 straight in, in SEC play. At a certain point, do you worry about trying to just keep it going, or tomorrow the only focus at this point? Yeah, tomorrow's, uh, you know, the sole focus for sure. Uh, not thinking about anything else at all. You know, to win this many games in a row uh, at this particular time of the year is, is overly, overly difficult. Um, you know, having said that, um, you know, we played well enough to win tonight. You know, I thought we came out, played much better in the second half uh, than we did in, in, in the first half. And uh, I thought defensively, just defensive rebounding was, was, was a big part of that as well. But to outscore them by seven, um, you know, after, after being down by one in the first half, I, I, I thought we did a good job the, the last 20 minutes of the game. Scotty. 
Coach Justin flipped that switch again offensively in the in the second half. What, what did you think of this game tonight and his his demeanor coming in? Well, he's been working on that flip shot for about the last two weeks. Um, it's kind of like a, a push shot. Uh, Antoine Jamison used to shoot that shot all the time, where he gets his gets it out of his hands really quickly. Um, it's not a jump hook. It's 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 not a mid range shot. It's it's this quick push shot. And I I've, I've noticed him working on it on his own a lot of late. Um, and he converted a couple of those that were really important. Um, you know, early in the game, certainly when when Tillman was on him, um, we were trying to go at Tillman and get him into foul trouble. Um, because we felt that was an advantage for us potentially uh, because Justin's a little bit quicker and Justin's really more of a 4-3. Um, so to have a five on him, and, and I thought Tillman did a good job. You know, Justin turned the ball over um, too much in the first half, but I thought he regrouped at halftime and came out and played a really, really phenomenal second half. Do you think he may have taken things a little bit personal, you know, given that two Missouri guys were selected all league over him? I mean, I don't really, know. you know, I, I think that we, we as a group have too much, too much team thoughts, um, Scotty, but um, I mean, everybody's got to try to self-motivate themselves before every game as best they can. And, um, you know, whether he, you know, felt that way or not, I'm not sure, but, um, you know, it was a really hard fought game. Kenneth. Hey coach. Uh, there are three guards in her backcourt were a combined 12 of 33 from the floor. Talk about how you're able to negate that team defensively because they do have a lot of firepower from the guard spot. Yeah, I, mean, I think, you know, Debo Davis, really good defender. Jalen Tate, you know, really good defender. Um, I thought those two guys with their length. And then the guy that's probably improved the most for us defensively at the guard spots, J.D. Note. He continues to get better. Uh, from a defensive standpoint, but it, w it was really important for us not to put Pinson on the foul line. I think he's averaging 10 free throws attempted against us um, in the two prior games. If he's not, that's what I told the team before the game, and, but I think that's what he was, and, and it was important not to put, you know, Drew Smith, those two guys, we did not want them to have a high volume of FTA, so uh, keeping them in front of us was, was a main priority from a defensive standpoint. Thank you. Thanks, Ken. Mm -hmm. Troy Lynch. Yeah, Coach, you know, you look at Moses Moody's stat line, he only has five points, but he seemed to really excel defensively. I was wondering what your thoughts were on his performance today. Yeah, I mean, I think, first of all, they, uh, they did a phenomenal job on Moses. You could tell that their game plan was to uh, limit Moses' touches. Uh, and I thought in the first half, we just had too many guys running to the basketball. And then we talked about going, to ba going back door. Uh, we talked about being decoys if they're going to face guard you or try to eliminate your catches. Um, you know, and, and that's you know, just one game that Moses just didn't score the ball a lot, but I thought he did a lot of other things for us um, you know, from, a, from a defensive standpoint, from a rebounding standpoint. Um, you know, we, the good thing is we get another game tomorrow. Todd. Coach, you've talked about the Arkansas crowd all season long, despite only having a little over 4,000 people. And I don't know, it was only 25% tonight, but there were the fans in attendance. It seemed like it was pretty Razorback red. What kind of impact do you think about the fans had tonight that made their way to Nashville? I mean, you know, I didn't really see any, you know, Razorback uh, red until today, but I saw a lot on the streets as we went to shoot around and as we came to the game, which was really neat. Um, you know, I was a little worried yesterday when, when I hadn't seen any or the day before, but I think our fans knew, you know, much better than I did that they really didn't need to show up until tonight at six. So I thought they were phenomenal for us again, just like they are, you know, every home game. I mean, we, we had a great crowd here for sure. Coach, do you think you anticipate that with a lot of people just not being able to golf work on Friday, do you anticipate being a Saturday, being a weekend that you'll see even more? people for the semifinal matchup tomorrow? I'm, I'm not really sure, Ty. I hope so. Um, you know, hopefully we'll have more. I don't, I don't know the situation with the tickets and stuff. But um, I would anticipate us having a few more people, yes. Randy? Eric, with this self-scouting that you did, is part of that 
the reason that there was so many turnovers, so many uh, offensive charges? Is that knowing your opponent uh, part of that self-evaluation that you did, self-scouting on your team? Well, I think defensively, Randy, we were, you know, really good tonight. I, I, I really do. I mean, I thought we let them shoot too high of a percentage for sure, especially in that first half. But I thought our second half defense of holding them to, you know, 37%, uh, 25% from the three was, was, was really, really vital. Um, yes, I did think that our guys had a, had a pretty good knowledge of the personnel and, and strengths and weaknesses um, of, of their team. But ho hopefully I didn't screw us up from an offensive standpoint because, my God, did we turn the ball over too much. Bob, final question, please. Yeah, Eric, it seemed like the pace was to Missouri's liking, but you guys won kind of a grinded out physical game. How would you feel about that? Really happy. I mean, I tried to put five guards out, out there so that we could – we could score the ball a little bit more in transition, but um, they do a great job of getting back in transition. They actually did a pretty good job running the ball opportunistically. Um, but I think that we've proven, you know, whether it's the Texas A&M game the other night, whether it's tonight, that we can kind of win in a, in a fast-paced game, which we'd prefer, but we can also uh, win in a, in, in a kind of grinded-out game as well. Okay, Coach, thank you for your, Thanks. For your time. You all right? You feel better?